One of the first paintings that the visitor sees in the exhibition is a marvellous portrait of Darwin by John Collier. It is extraordinarily vivid in the way that Darwin looks straight out of the picture towards us, and yet Collier gives him great dignity. It's a simple portrait, there are no trappings of science or of his social rank. Darwin himself began his career as a geologist, and he, like the artists of the day, were immersed in all the new discoveries in geology, in paleontology, which made artists and the public at large understand that the world was far older than the Bible had ever specified. And one of the most spectacular paintings is this painting by William Dice. It shows the passing of Donati's comet in the sky, figures collecting shells on the beach, and behind them, the strata of the cliff face behind, which is an indication of the ancient layers which have built up the Earth's surface. Darwin's most important idea was the way that natural selection works in nature, eliminating weaker animals and indeed weaker human beings. This is a wood engraving which appeared in an illustrated magazine in, in the Victorian era. They're trying to get tickets which will admit them to the, the overnight workhouse. The homeless mother with her children, the, the drunk and various other sorts of derelicts. So there are all the tensions of class conflict here. The whole problem of whether the weaker members of society should be fed and nurtured and looked after, or whether they should just be allowed to go to the wall, as in wild nature. Just as in part one of Descent of Man, Darwin looked at the origins of humankind, in part two, he looks very specifically at the theory of sexual selection. He concentrates particularly in courtship displays among birds and how humans, women particularly, started to adopt male plumage as part of the way to attract a mate so the reverse of the natural world when it was the females who did the choosing. It's known that many of the Impressionists either read Darwin or knew of Darwin through friends and scientific circles. The most interesting case is Edgar Degas. While it's every little girl's ballet pin-up today, at the time it was said by one critic to be something that belonged more in a museum of anthropology or physiology than it did in an art museum. They saw a simian-like appearance in the feature of the little girl's face with a little turned-up nose. The other thing to say that was when she was exhibited, she was exhibited in a glass case. That was very unusual. It would have again reminded visitors of the sorts of things they would expect to see in glass jars in museums of medicine. Mm -hmm. 